Welcome to the Rare History Channel. Johnny Torrio's Astonishing Transformation from Street Thug to Criminal Mastermind Johnny Donato Torrio was an Italian-born American mobster who helped to build a criminal organization, the Chicago Outfit, in the 1920s, it was later inherited by his protege, Al Capone. He also put forth the idea of the National Crime Syndicate in the 1930s and later became an unofficial advisor to the Genovese crime family. Take a look for 32 more strange and interesting facts about Johnny Torrio. Fact number 1. He gained several nicknames but was mostly known as the Fox for his cunning and finesse. Number 2. Widely considered one of the most influential personalities in American organized crime, Torrio impressed authorities and chroniclers for his business acumen and diplomatic skills. Number 3. The U.S. Treasury official Elmer Irie considered him the biggest gangster in America and wrote, he was the smartest and, I dare say, the best of all the hoodlums. Number 4. Virgil W. Peterson of the Chicago Crime Commission stated that his talents as an organizational genius were widely respected by the major gang bosses in the New York City area. Number 5. Crime journalist Herbert Asbury affirmed, as an organizer and administrator of underworld affairs Johnny Torrio is unsurpassed in an annals of American crime, he was probably the nearest thing to a real mastermind that this country has yet produced. Number 6. Torrio was born in Ursina, then known as Montepoloso, Basilicata, in southern Italy, to Tommaso and Maria Carluccio originally from Altamira, Apulia. Number 7. When he was two his father, a railway employee, died in a work accident, and Torrio shortly after emigrated to New York City with his widowed mother in December, 1884. She later remarried. Number 8. His first jobs were as a porter and bouncer in Manhattan. Number 9. While he was a teenager, he joined a street gang and became its leader, he eventually managed to save enough money and opened a billiards parlor for the group and from there grew illegal activities such as gambling and loan sharking. Number 10. Torrio's business sense caught the eye of Paul Kelly, the leader of the infamous Five Points Gang. Number 11. Torrio's gang ran legitimate businesses, but its main concern was the numbers game, supplemented by incomes from bookmaking, loan sharking, hijacking, prostitution, and opium trafficking. Number 12. Al Capone, who worked at Kelly's Club, admired Torrio's quick mind and looked at him as his mentor. Number 13. Torrio, in turn, greatly admired Kelly, who knew much about organized crime culture. Kelly convinced the younger man to dress conservatively, stop swearing, and set up a front as a legitimate entrepreneur. Number 14. Capone had belonged to the Junior 40 Thieves, the Bowery Boys and the Brooklyn Rippers, they soon moved up to the Five Points Gang. Number 15. Torrio eventually hired Capone to bartend at the Harvard Inn, a bar in the Coney Island section of Brooklyn owned by Torrio's business associate, Francesco Iol. Number 16. In 1909, Torrio moved to Chicago at the invitation of his aunt, Victoria Moresco. She and her husband, James Colosimo, notoriously known as Big Jim, were the owners of more than 100 brothels and saloons as well as a nightclub in Chicago. Number 17. Since they had made it big, the Colosimos were being blackmailed by a group of extortionists and wanted Torrio to take care of that. Number 18. On reaching Chicago, Torrio fixed an appointment to have the money paid, but as the extortionists came to collect it, he had them gunned down. Number 19. On neutralizing the extortionists, Torrio started running the brothels for his uncle and aunt, setting up his route in Chicago. Soon, he started expanding the brothel business by obtaining virgins through white slave trades. Number 20. He also organized the muscle power necessary for running such a business. When two women escaped from the brothels and threatened to report, he sent two of his men, who met the women as undercover agents and gunned them down before they could testify against him. Number 21. For the first 10 years, Torrio operated from Colosimo's Cafe at 2126 South Wabash Avenue. Over the time, he opened a new saloon and a gambling den. Number 22. In 1919, he opened a brothel called The Four Deuces at 2222 South Wabash Avenue and began operating from there. Number 23. 
Also in 1919, he brought Al Capone to Chicago. Capone had so far been working as a bartender at the Harvard Inn, a bar owned by Frankie Yale on Coney Island. Number 24. As Prohibition came into force on January 17, 1920, Torrio saw a lucrative opportunity in bootlegging. Number 25. After the death of Colosimo in 1920, Torrio took over his vast empire and immediately ventured into bootlegging. He also consolidated his group, which until then was called the South Side Mob. Later, it would be known as the Chicago Outfit. Number 26. Abenio double-crossed Torrio in a brewery acquisition, which resulted in Torrio's arrest and caused great monetary loss to him. Ultimately, Torrio lost his patience and ordered his execution. Abenio was shot dead on November 10, 1924. Number 27. Abenio's death led to a bloody turf war between the North Side and the Chicago Outfit. On January 24, 1925, Abenio's henchman, Hemi Weiss, Vincent Trucci, and Bugs Moran attacked Torrio while he was returning home from shopping, wounding him severely in the jaw, lungs, groin, legs and abdomen. Number 28. Although Torrio survived the attack he was severely injured and needed to undergo emergency operation. While he was recouping from the assassination attempt, Capone's men guarded him around the clock so that no further attempt on his life was made. Number 29. All along, Torrio maintained the gangland principle of Omerta, which involved non-cooperation with authorities and kept totally silent, not revealing the names of the attackers. After his release from the hospital, he was jailed for one year for violating prohibition. Number 30. On his release from jail, Torrio decided to retire. Handing over his empire to Al Capone, he left for Italy in late 1925 with his mother and wife. Number 31. Although he didn't participate directly in the mafia activities in Italy, he was forced to return to the United States in 1928 as Mussolini began to mount pressure on them. Here, he invested in real estate, earning huge profit from it. Later, he also established a legal liquor distribution company. Number 32. On April 16, 1957, while he was waiting for a haircut in a barber's saloon, Torrio had a heart attack. He was immediately taken to the nearby Cumberland Hospital, where he died within a few hours.